All right, so we're going to look at period, amplitude, and midline of sine and cosine. We're not straight up graphing them yet. We are just going to be looking at some of the features. So here's your sine and your cosine parent functions. All right, there's two cycles of each. Your amplitude we will define down here. It's, the definition is that it's half the distance between the max and the min value. On the parent function, it's really just the distance from the x-axis to the max, max or the min value. We'll look at it a couple of different ways. So this right here is your amplitude. And then the period for your function, remember, is one complete cycle. So for sine, this would be one complete cycle right here. Oops. Well, it's so much better, but it's fine. All right, so this is your one complete cycle from here to here. So this is the period of that distance is the period of the function. For the parent function, it's 2 pi. So for your cosine, here would be your amplitude. And then this would be one cycle. Oh. And from here to here would be the period. Okay. So then it goes on to say that notice that the cosine function Cosine is a horizontal translation of the sine function. We looked at that yesterday. It says, so therefore any, trans, any transformation of a sine function is called a sinusoid. Therefore, sine and cosine are sinusoidal functions. That's one way to talk about them, sinusoidal functions. They're also called periodic functions because functions that repeat at regular intervals are periodic functions. just different classifications for them. All right, so let's actually define these things. The period, the period is the length of one cycle, and it can start at any point on the graph. So when we've looked at the parent functions, we're looking at it starting at zero, and that's fine. And actually what we're doing today, we can look at it starting at zero. But once we do a horizontal translation left or right, it, it may not start at zero. It can start anywhere. As long as you can find the beginning and the end of one cycle and you figure out that distance, that's the length of the period. Then we have amplitude. That is half the distance between the max and min values. Oh, it says values. My bad. Okay. All right. For frequency, I'm going to put a little star here because um, I'm going to give you the definition for a pure math, the way we're doing it type of thing. I'm going to tell you what, what the actual, what it, how it would apply to everything. So the frequency is the number of cycles within one unit of measurement. So it could be, if you're looking at sound waves, it could be the number of cycles in one second or in one minute or whatever it is that you're doing. Because we are doing pure math, pure trig stuff here, and it's not necessarily applied to anything at this point, our one unit of measurement is one period, which is 2 pi. So instead of, so you can't, when you're looking at it in one unit of measurement, we're talking about like in one second, you might see that frequency is the reciprocal of period, but that doesn't, that doesn't hold true with everything. So if our one unit of measurement is 2 pi, then they're not reciprocals of each other. Instead, the way we look at it is it's the number of cycles in 2 pi units. Okay, so little star there in case you see it differently or you're applying it differently. It's just because it's, this is still in one unit of measurement. Our one unit of measurement is, just happens to be 2 pi. Okay. All right. 
Then we have the midline. So we wrote this stuff out yesterday, but we didn't necessarily know exactly what all of it meant. So when you shift a graph vertically, you create a new horizontal axis. So it's kind of like when we did transformations and we had a horizontal asymptotes and the asymptote just went with it, right? We don't have any asymptotes here. Instead, for our original function, so this is sine of x, the x-axis goes right through the middle of it. And so when I translate it up, I still have a line going right through the middle of it. It's just not at y equals 0 anymore. If sine goes to sine of x plus 4, I've shifted up 4. So has basically the old axis. So this becomes my new x-axis. This line would be y equals 4 in this case. And this is called the midline. So just like with an asymptote, even though the asymptote is technically part, not part of the, the graph itself, we still put it in there as a dotted line. Same thing with the midline. You want it graphed in there because it's going to help you with everything. It makes it way more difficult if it's not in there. So this is the reference line on which the graph oscillates. Right? And the oscillating is the bouncing. That's what oscillating means. And then the equation is just the y equals d, which is your vertical shift. Any questions at this point? So some new vocabulary. Hopefully it's not too far out there. Now let's look at the translation or transformations down here. This is missing some stuff, or not some stuff, but one thing, from what we wrote in yesterday, because C is not in here. We had A, B, C, and D. C is still important. We're just not going to talk about the phase shifts yet. So I just left it off of here. So we just have to worry about A, B, and D right now. A has always been your vertical stretch. It's still the vertical stretch. It's just called something different. It's called the amplitude. So your amplitude is the absolute value of A. The period is not something that you choose just straight out of there. The period you have to calculate by doing 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. And then the frequency is the absolute value of b. So the period is how far, how, what's the distance for one cycle? Then the frequency is how many cycles fit in 2 pi. So they're related to each other, and you can figure out one from the other, but they're not the exact same thing. Your vertical shift is still d, just like it's always been. And then the midline is just y equals d. Okay. Any questions at this point? All we're doing right now is identifying this stuff. That's it. So we can make sense of it with the new vocabulary, and we know what's what. Okay. All right, so let's look at number one here. So this says identify the amplitude, frequency, period, and midline of each function. So my amplitude, it's the absolute value of A. A is the first thing that would come before sine. So what do you think the amplitude is? One. Okay. Frequency is the absolute value of B. B is what's being multiplied by X, and so that's just four. I'm going to use the frequency to figure out the period. So this is 2 pi. So the period is equal to 2 pi divided by the frequency, which is 4. So that gives me pi hats. Right? The midline I get from my vertical shift, but it's always a line, equation of a line. So this is y equals 2. Everybody good? Any questions? No. All right, let's look at number two. What's the amplitude in number two? Seven halves, okay. My frequency? One, very good. So then the period's two pi over one, so that's just two pi. And then the midline is y equals what? Negative three, very good. Okay. Any questions? All right, so I'm gonna give you just a minute and I want you to do three and four on your own.
Okay, for number three, Guillermo, can you tell me what the amplitude is? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. It is five. You'll agree with that? Yes. Okay. Um, Glory, tell me what do you think the frequency is? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And Cisco, what about the period? Okay. Do you know how you use the frequency to find it? Can you tell me what I'm supposed to do? What did we write at the bottom of the first page when we wrote what the period is? How do I find the period? Can you look at that? What does it say? Absolutely. Okay. So to find the period, we're going to do 2 pi divided by the, my frequency, that one third, right? And so there's that one third. Now, that's a fraction and a fraction, but you can always, instead of dividing, you're multiplying by the reciprocal. So we can really just make that 2 pi times 3 over 1. So then, Cisco, what would the period be? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And this is why I'm making y'all answer questions, because I know sometimes you don't get it, but nobody asks me questions. All right, so then midline, let's see. Damien, what's the midline? What do you think? Would I just write zero? Oh, probably not. Okay, so how should I write it? I'm not saying you're wrong, it's just not the full answer. There you go. Thank you very much. Awesome. All right, so we good on those? Any questions? All right. Jocelyn, tell me what the amplitude is on number four. I'm sorry, what? Two? Okay. Mia, can you tell me what the frequency is? Four over three. Yes, ma'am. Marcus, can you tell me what the period is? Yes, sir. Three pi over two. So because I know somebody's thinking, how the heck did he get that? Let me show you. We would do 2 pi divided by 4 thirds, which is the same as times 3 fourths. Then when you reduce that, you get 3 pi halves. Okay? Abby, what's the midline? Y equals 5. Thank you very much. Okay. Any questions at all on that? All right, great job. So now we're going to find this stuff looking at the graph. Okay, so the very first thing you should always do with your graph is the midline, because it's going to make everything easier. I know it's the fourth in the list of things to do, but I still think it's probably the best. So you want to find basically the middle of it. For the parent function, it's y equals 0. But here, if this has a total height of 4, I'm going to go halfway in between and make my midline right there. Pay attention to the, the scale on the y-axis so that you don't you know, count wrong on something. Once you think you have the midline in, double check that you're right by taking the midline, counting to the maximum value, midline, counting to the minimum value, make sure they're the same and that you're actually in the middle. So now that I have it drawn in, I might as well go ahead and answer the question. So if this is at zero, then I'm at one, two, three, four. So my midline is y equals four. By checking that my midline is correct, I've really already counted my amplitude. Because yes, the amplitude is half the distance between the max and the min values, but it's also just the distance a max or min is from the midline. So from the midline, I can just count up one, two. My amplitude is two. Frequency and period, you can get, sometimes you can get both of them straight from the graph. Sometimes you can only get one of them straight from the graph. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the different ways to do this here. First thing you want to do, because again, we have not done any shifts left or right yet. So tell me, is this a cosine or a sine function? Cosine. Because if I haven't shifted left or right, the fact that it starts here on the y-axis, one cycle would be right there. Okay? 
So that one cycle there, we good? And one cycle, if I could tell what this was, I could pull the period right off of the graph. But on the way that this grid is set up, I don't know exactly what that amount is. If there were actual lines there, I might be able to figure it out, but I don't know, okay? So I can't just say, oh, that's the period. So instead, I'm gonna look and see if I can figure out the frequency. The frequency is how many cycles in two pi. So if I start here at zero, and I go all the way to two pi, then I can see I have, this is one cycle, two, three. So I have a total of three cycles. That means my frequency is three. And then I can figure out the period. It's just, the period is just two pi divided by the frequency. So this is two pi thirds. Okay, everybody okay with that? All right. Good deal. Any questions on number five? All righty, let's look at number six. So I'm going to start on number six with my midline. Ooh. Okay, and again, pay attention to the, and it's even worse up here than it is on your paper. I'm pretty sure this is, is this a negative one? Y'all help me because, okay, it's like just a big blob up here. All right, so that means that each of the dark lines is one. That's what I thought. And so I'm going from one to negative three, so I'm thinking midline is right there. So here's my midline. It looks like my midline is at y equals negative one. And paying attention to the scale, right, we can find the amplitude. I would actually count up one, two. Amplitude here is two. Then is this a sine or a cosine graph? It's a sine graph. So I'm gonna start here. And this right here is one cycle. All right. And the first thing it asks for is frequency. So frequency, I can either get from the period or I can get the period from frequency or I can get them both from the graph. Can you figure out the period straight from the graph? by looking at it, hopefully. I, I can't because I can't read that number. I think you can. I tried to make it, oh, no. Yeah, can you read it? Yeah, okay. It looks much better on the paper than it does on here. So what is, so that means that this is zero. This is the end of the period. What does that number say? Four pi thirds. So one cycle, since I started at zero, that period is four pi thirds. I could use that to find the frequency. Because it also depends on like how much information is on your graph and what you can see. So I could take 2 pi, divide it by this, and get the frequency. So let's do that, and then I'll show you another way to do that. So I could do 2 pi. Instead of dividing by 4 pi thirds, I'm going to multiply by 3 over 4 pi. Right? And then the pi's will cancel out. That makes that 2. So I get 3 halves for my frequency. I could have figured that out on this specific graph without doing the calculations because here's zero, here's two pi, and I get one and a half cycles, which is three halves, okay? So I can get it from the graph or I can get it algebraically, it doesn't matter either way. All right, any questions at all? How do you know if it's cosine or sine? Is that what you were gonna ask? Okay, so. I don't understand. I don't understand the question. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So those are kind of the same question. So the question is, first of all, how do I know if it's sine or cosine? I'm glad you said that because I forgot to write it. And how come I started up here and ended here, but then I started here and ended here? It's because of the type of graph it is, and so we're going to decide. So remember your parent functions. And let's see, do I have room up here? Well, I'm gonna do it off to the side. Um, so this one's a cosine of x, and I know that because my cosine parent function looks like this. And because I'm telling you right now that there are no translations left or right, that since it starts here in one full cycle, I end here before it starts repeating again. That's what makes it cosine. This one, starting at x equals zero, I go to here 
before it starts repeating again, and this one is a sine graph. Does that help? Does that answer your question? And that's how we know from those parent functions. What if we added translations, we could write these either as sine or cosine, just translate it over, but we're just going to start this way and make sure we get this stuff first. Those are great questions. Anything else? Okay, I want you to try number seven and then stop because I think this is one's a little, um, and then let's make sure we all get number seven before we do number eight. If you want to go ahead and do them both, that's fine, but um, do number seven and we'll talk about it and see, make sure we get it. Start with the midline. Erica, can you tell me what the midline is? Or what you think it is? Is that what? Oh, you can't see it? Oh, goodness. Dang it. You know why? Urgh. Okay, I'm sorry. So this morning, I printed these out off of my printer, and they worked just fine. Then I printed... I went and made these on the copy machine and you can't see the lines, so I apologize for that. So, um, yeah, so this is, since this is at five here, this is your little hash marks. Sorry about that, I didn't realize that was an issue there. And so, yes, it's at, right here, at negative two. Right, because then, then I can double check, I count up one, two, three, four, and then, okay. So I would have y equals negative two. Dang it. All right, then, Amplitude. Trin, what's the amplitude? What do you think it is since you can't see the lines? <laughs> Four, yeah. If you could see the lines, would it make sense? Okay, that's 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 the important part because okay. I'm thinking maybe I'll just always print them off. I don't know. All right, so then my frequency, I think maybe we could figure this out just fine. So um Alex, tell me what you think the frequency is. One, yes. Okay. Because there's, I start here, and between zero and two pi, I just get one of those, right? All right, Evelyn, what about the period? Two pi, very good. Okay, so everybody good with that? Okay, and then, yeah, it's, really kind of bad on the last one too. So um, let's do this one together since you can't really see those lines on there. All right. So where the lines are, this is at five, and so this is four, three, two, one, and then one, two, if you need to put those on there so you can see. So then that means that my midline if I'm, this is four, this is two, so my midline should be at one, I believe. Then double check myself, one, two, three, one, two, three. So by doing that, I got two things. I have my midline is y equals one, and I've just counted my amplitude, which is three. The frequency, how many cycles do I get between zero and 2 pi, well, I'm going to start here. First of all, is this sine or cosine? Cosine. So this is a cosine graph. I forgot to ask in the last one. So between 0 and 2 pi, how many cycles do I get? Half of 1, right? Half of 1. And so, yes, I could do the math on that, but thinking just logically off the graph, if between 0 and 2 pi I have half of the function, or half of those cycle, then I need how much more to get the whole cycle? Another two pi, which means the period is four pi. So the larger the period is, the more stretched out your function is, okay? Because the larger the period is, the smaller the frequency is, and that's what's being multiplied by x, and remember x still lies, so you multiply a smaller number, it stretches it out, okay? Any questions at all? Are we all good out there? 
Y'all good? Awesome.